the caveat is that they're all connected. The shadows kind yeah. of feed from one another in the end, and the gifts feed from one another. It's almost like you tap into the shadow, you, you turn them all on across the board, and it depends. Yeah. No matter what key you have your shadow in. People like you that are enabling great change for others, and just your presence, and just your being. And it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be a celebrity to do it either. You can just be walking down the street or sitting in a room. And you're making the difference. How can I contribute something? Hmm. And that's a big fear too. It's like, oh, I'm going to change my city or my town or my country. Like, yeah, it's possible. It starts with one person. Hmm. Welcome to Gene Key number two. The shadow of dislocation, the gift of orientation, and the city of unity. The gift of orientation is so profound that it creates a torus around us. That is what our trust does. We trust the suffering of another. We open our hearts to them without agenda, and they receive our trust at a cellular level. Hello. Hello, aloha. Aloha. <clears throat> All right, so today we're talking about Jinky 2. I did some studies this morning on it, and um, wow, it's, we're only on the second, and I'm thinking totally different from the first one. <laughs> I know, much different flavor. It's a feminine flavor, yeah. other than the masculine. Yeah. Since I, I talked more about the masculine, would you like to, you know, uh, dive into this feminine side? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, ironically, this was easier for me to to step into and to work with. Seriously. So I, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why though? So this like, why? I think because it is feminine, and there, you know, some in some of my chart stuff that we've talked about, like in my South Node being Cancer and all this stuff. Like I have a history, perhaps past lives or just ancestral or whatever it is, just a familiarity with the feminine. And then the masculine is like the challenging, you know, like being the the figure and, and pushing forward and being. Yeah, that's my that's my answer. I don't know if that is actually <laughs> why it's easier. It just maybe for me also, it's like. The first one was more challenging because I haven't worked in that realm as much. Whereas with dislocation and orientation and unity, I've definitely wrestled with a lot and spent spent some time there um, and feeling and embodying that. So it feels fam more familiar to me. Hmm. And I think it's we we do have a maybe cl maybe close like very taboo way of thinking between masculine and feminine. What mm -hmm. we think the feminine is, it's really not what this is all about. That is very, it's, it is gentle way, but it's almost like putting it all together. So it does make sense rather than the logical way of thinking it in the, in the jinky one. I connected yeah. with jinky one more than with this one. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what, so what was, what was most challenging looking at this one? CD. The CD unity. Yes. Just the perspective of it, it's almost like incomprehensible a, a, a yet. So it's a there's a I didn't have a time to contemplate too much about it, but I sure. think if I were to think and reread it again, it's something that reading it once won't do much, rather than reading it again many times and then thinking about it will bring some sort of understanding. Yeah, well, I'm curious to see what will come up in our discussion today. Maybe some. All right, let's go. Yeah. Okay. So the second gene key shadow is dislocation. And I have some, I did take notes this week. <laughs> oh, nice. A so separate the, book. Separate <laughs> book. Yeah. I can't write in the book. So the couple of notes I want to start with were, you know, in dislocation, we think we are separate selves, separate beings on separate paths, and we don't understand how we fit in with the great grand picture. It feels like disharmony. 
is the only way to describe it. Like we don't have an understanding of the why. And even in, in as Richard talked about in this one, the where and the when are also deeply connected with the why. And how many of us don't want to take a chance to look at whether it's a star chart or gene keys or human design to take a look at ourselves from the perspective of that larger picture, the larger whole, and how we might be a cog or like a uh, a vessel in a way, like a vessel of the expression of all into one. And I'm starting off very esoteric, so I apologize if I've lost you. But um, just a note to go off of here, the personal resonance you have to unity will determine the frequency that travels through your DNA. Mm. So the personal resonance you have to unity determines the frequency in your DNA. And this is something so profound that when you feel it or when you have evidence signs that there has been a shift, it's unmistakable. And, and we get trapped in trying to come back to, well, let me define what, what just happened. Let me explain it. Let me use science to determine what happened. And you, and to a certain point we can, we can step into the quantum realm or cause and effect even, but it is, as described here, it's a resonance to unity. So it has almost nothing to do with our effort. It's as, sim it's as simple as like a surrendering. Mm. What are your thoughts? And we're talking about the shadow. Which this is, is, this is in the shadow, yeah. <laughs> wow. It's interesting how I got this very differently from you. <clears throat> which is also something to bring to bring up too is that it's not a, not the same thing will not resonate right. with everyone the same way i have to think about it your yeah. way and okay. it's almost like i highlighted so many things let me just ask you a, a more direct question here then. the So the frequency in your DNA, have you felt a shift within that you couldn't explain that was related to like a moment of, okay, I'm going to just let go a little more. Yes. And then maybe it happened over the next week or so. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so it's almost... So, so how I understood it is like we are moving as a collective consciousness from the phase of thinkers to um, the phase of like um, solar plexus feelings mm -hmm. where that feeling just comes, that exact mm -hmm. feeling that you're pointing out. And you don't know why, but it happens when your time comes. It's almost like you, you cannot even control it. It comes for you it comes to get you mm. and it comes to get you and it's been getting a lot of us this is why we have um collective awakening this is why people can relate to that part of shadow more now than before mm. this is why we get to think and talk and understand one another and really dive into depth of it without really knowing why but yet believing and trusting there is a reason for it yes yes absolutely and so in this in this time in this age that we're going through and and like how divisive media is and the world seems to be and these forces at play it's allowing the, like the two methods, the two mechanisms for the shift to occur are awareness or actions. And it sounds like for you, it was, or it, it is a 
more of the awareness than it is of an action? Or is it both? It, it is awareness, but you yeah. can almost feel when you pass over on the other side. Yeah. How about you? Do you feel yeah. the change? And it's like you're in a different, totally different space. Yeah. The An easy representation for me is like, in a in a physical way it's if people haven't experienced it you know it's like i i would challenge them to try but you can step into a room and if you're if you're in a personal resonance of divisiveness like if you had an argument say or you you receive news that wasn't great for you personally you step into a room and it seems like everyone's feeling the same way. Like people are kind of combative and argumentative and there's not a lot of unity. There's, there's a lot of misunderstanding. Like it could be like you go into the bank and people are really impatient in line or at the grocery store and you're like, you can't, you can't get anything done efficiently or you're like, you know, it's like people are in your way all the time. It's as simple as like if you stepped into a room and you felt that energy or you or you had the awareness, you could step right out, come out, take a few breaths, and then just having like a thought or like a mantra, something that says what's happening now is it is part of a larger harmony. I might not understand it, but it is. And can I be okay with that enough? to just let go of what's happening in my life right this second. Like letting go in the sense of like, I'm grasping so hard to make things make sense for myself. Mm. And I let go of that. Stepping back into the room, it might take, it might take a little bit, but you'll, it's too obvious. Like I've just seen it too many times to be, You know, you'll, and it could be a, it could be so subtle, like someone takes extra time to help you or someone notices that you drop something and they pick it up for you. Like these little things that are, that are pointing toward that greater harmony. Mm, so you're saying it's almost a cues or uh, breadcrumbs that you can see mm -hmm. differently once you're aware of it, that all of this is part of some unified process. Mm -hmm. That it's much larger than just the physiological, psychological, biological things that are happening at that moment in that place and space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's and that's pulling in that synchronistic happening, the synchronicities <laughs> and the magic, and something that I know we both feel on a visceral level, like we can just tell when it's happening. So, but I, I have to deviate from it and I, I want to ask you something. So yeah. when I read the gift of mm -hmm. and I connected the synchronicity to it, I almost um, I almost was able to so understand it so very well that I cannot understand the shadow any longer. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. And what's happening, even as I'm taking notes, I'm taking it right from the shadow text, but everything, <laughs> everything is like, gift and city oriented it's like so i wonder if yeah i think what you're what you're bringing up is like someone that's in the shadow they they wouldn't be able to understand what we're talking about and then even as we're pulling away from the shadow we no longer we have just very distant you know fading memories of what it was like to be in the shadow and what that felt like yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like a different entity we we're talking about. And if you remember in the last week, we talked about in gene one, two, I think we started like that. I listened to our um, recording again. Yeah. And we, we started talking about you cannot do both. It's almost mm -hmm. there are different separate entities. They're very siloed is that the ones you tap into this gift, then you feel it with your bones. You you cannot feel the shadow of it. Mm -hmm. You either or or the, the CD2. So when you talk about the synchronicities, it's like, oh, I can, I can tell a lot of things about <laughs> it. But yet the shadow I'm having now, I feel like I'm almost separated from it so far. Yeah. That it's not comprehensible. It's very hard to comprehend it or understand yeah. it other than the biological functioning of the shadows 
So let's try to break it down as best as we can. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. So this shadow. This is easier for me. The shadow is the masculine first, right? With placing the masculine first. And Richard talked about when the I Ching was originally founded. There's evidence that the second jinki was actually the first, right? It was actually the container and that's because it's a feminine principle but the patriarchy the the winning theme of thought at the time placed the masculine first because it's what made sense mm -hmm. during that period so in the shadow they're even flipping this concept right they're even yeah. like well no you have to have this polarity, this pole, the masculine pole, that's a science seeking, understanding the world, comprehending, placing things and division, dislocation, all these concepts. So it's like, of course, when you, you're like, if you're in the shadow and you're in that state, you're serving the greater harmony in such a way like it's it's luciferian right it's like the <laughs> it's really hard for me not, not to go esoteric and and then tie it back it's like each thing that we talk about i'm tying it back into how it's harmonious and it's like that's kind of what we're saying mm -hmm. so let me ask you have you ever felt this shadow yeah well, i grew up grew up in it I, I mean for most of my life Okay, so can you give the life example of what that feels like sure. so people can connect? Sure. Let me think of something more specific because I find that to be most helpful. Um, so let's say as a, as a teenager, I was um adverse to authority i didn't i wasn't happy with it how things were going i thought that the man you know the government the even my school teachers principals i almost placed everyone as like this like force to be subverted or conquered or outsmarted or outwitted and you know i did my best to do that and so it placed me naturally when i'm when i'm looking framing the world in this way of how can I get out from the the shadow of authority? And and it's like me versus them. And mm -hmm. then that, and that bled into my family life too. So it's like going for a car ride with my mom and just just like getting in this heated argument about almost nothing and feeling can like I remember feeling in my body like this sense of just wanting to throw myself out of the car without reason just to have like a and that's what they talk about here it's like the action shift so you have a new awareness huh. and so like that that kept coming up like just do something different do something drastic and it's like maybe that was a messenger or an intuitive sense of self saying like you're so stuck in the shadow we got we have to get you out and so I had a lot of sickness. I was sick very often. Um, I didn't have, I had a small friend group, but I wouldn't say I could just gel with anyone. Like, you know, it's like you think the world is um, a combative place to live in and you, you harmonize with that version of reality that you've accepted. Hmm. So you're saying you were very dislocated. Very from, dislocated, yeah. And you felt very separated and dual from the other, from other structures, institutions, people, family, whatever that the other represented, you felt very much separated from it. There was no, there was no thing that was not other. Wow. Right. Even, even in like, like my brief introduction to like what meditation was i'm stepping into that as like a, okay i want to understand my body okay let me see if i can turn my mind off it still is other 
not it was the opposite direction it was like further into defi- definition and dislocation wow that is a nice way of explaining it it, when you have that sense, when you live with it and it's constantly around you, within you, and that's who you are and you feel that on a, on a every inhale and exhale to grow, grow up like this. And, and in my case, I never felt like that. And I don't know, is it the environment or our memory of our past lives and who we were in the past or what we carry over on an ancestral line? But I never felt such a separation, such a physical, biological separation from the other. Hmm. I don't have that feeling. Yeah. That's why maybe I am really having a hard time understanding this shadow. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, we could explore the why behind that potentially. Um, Well, the question is, do we get to embody all 64 keys one or the other way? 64 and all three, three layers of 64 keys. Do we get to? Do we get to? Wait, do we get to live through all 64 keys? As individuals? Yes, in this lifetime. In this lifetime. That seems like a lot, but I, you know, I only have two to go off of so far. I've read some <laughs> of the ones. But... Yeah. <laughs> but, and the, the caveat is that they're all connected. So shadows kind yeah. of feed from one another in the end, and the gifts feed from one another. It's almost like you tap into the shadow, you, you turn them all on across the board, and it depends. Yeah. No matter what key you have your shadow in, you will feel the sensations of the other or some sort of um, influence of the other, like yeah. cross-pollinating, same as gifts. Yeah, and you're, like, when I was reading the gift of orientation, I was thinking about how well you embody it like like in that question you're you're pointing toward the div- division right like can we do can we experience all 64 all three levels in this lifetime like a very dislocated question and then in your answer you're orienting to the whole and saying <laughs> it's all connected <laughs> in a way and so it's yeah it's funny um I imagine myself listening to this in that in that dislocated shadow state and just thinking these people are cuckoo crazy. Hmm. And it is what it is, you know. It's this will be an interesting one for for an audience that I think it'll be shifting for the audience that didn't know they felt it before but they have felt it like like that shift in awareness and kind of giving them an opportunity to think for themselves wait that was really profound was it just the one time or was there has there been multiple occurrences and i think we all can i think all of us actually can pull in instances where we've been gifted someone else's orientation and and as we talk about the city we can talk about those people who embody it and how they can help activate others and you're saying so you you're saying all all of us have been gifted to experience someone else's orientation or this orientation um I think all of us have experienced something that was beyond the dislocation and that that might have come from another person or it just might have been a moment of magic that we we then put in a box somewhere and we say like okay well it was probably a coincidence you know it was probably just happenstance or luck like what is luck (laughs) Uh uh-huh Reminded me of a story of my aunt. Mm-hmm. She, this brief um, touch on the shadow or the awareness that you're passing through from the shadow to your gift in synchronicities is that the moment of um, when she was diagnosed with cancer and she thought she has just little left to live. 
everything changed upside down. Suddenly mm-hmm. out of blue, she becomes aware of everything. She's loving herself, her life, her body. She's aware of the synchronicities and suddenly something just continuously started bringing her to this light and enlightenment and blissful thinking. And she was universal love and everything was just like everything she would touch you would just turn into a bliss and positive energy. And she was misdiagnosed. And then she realized that that short period of time, not misdiagnosed, but she was able to recover from it. Yeah. which she did not think previously. So the moment she realized she was able to recover, the moment she recovered and went back to living fully biologically healthy, she went right back to the shadow. Really? Yes, right back to the shadow, remembering that there was a time in her life when she felt so connected with everything that there is that she's now understanding there is the place and space for her. She can't tap into it. She doesn't know how to. Because she feels now so separated from it that she, it's very hard for her to tap into the gift of it. But she went back to the shadow to this day years later. She's still uh, living in duality, separated. Hmm. Can the way, ta- the way she talks, the way she thinks, the way it's, it's very much shadowy. And you can, it's like, it's, it's, um, it's, it's you can you can you can sense it in her sound that she produces mm-hmm. you can yeah. in tone. the choice tone in the choices of words that she's using it's that she's so far away from it mm. and very separated because life happens you need to do this this is this and there's that authority there's that like you know like i have to follow a specific structure a way of thinking but now uh the gift of synchronicity is it's just a dream Almost to a point where she doesn't, almost to a point that I wonder, does she even think it was real? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, it's easy. It's easy in the shadow to say you're hallucinating when that stuff happens. Yes, you're, yes, it's easy. Oh, yes, yeah. it's easy when you're in the shadow to say that you're hallucinating about the gifts that you just experienced. Yes. Vice versa is not the same. You know exactly when you're in a gift, you know exactly that the shadow is very real. Yeah. <laughs> very real. And it's right, not right, fake. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, oh. just just as easily as we're able to feel orientated in in the whole. If we choose to feel dislocated again or or speak words that are dislocated, we could start to I mean as an experiment, I wouldn't want to do it to myself, but we could try it right now and we would feel it in our in our body, in our, you know, it's like. Yes, and here's the one in the shadow that I found and I highlighted actions that come out of trust have very different results from actions that come out of fear. It's like you live life very differently from these two very different perspectives. So it's like, it's almost, you know, that there's a passage between it's almost the bridge that you can cross over in the shadow versus the gift. Mm -hmm. And yet the feelings, the feel that you inhabit or embody are very different with that, your actions and the way of thinking Mm -hmm. as well. The former creates more energy for everyone and latter takes energy away from everyone. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you're trusting that when you become aware in your solar plexus, that there is the greater good for everything. Nothing is coincidental. Synchronicities are not there just for the sake of them existing. Yeah, You trust the process. The energy that you create is there to be shared with everyone. When you tap into the shadow of that separation, of that duality, of that um, rejection or contraction, you're full of fear, yet you're sucking out the energy from other people. You become a vampire sucker energy yeah that's so on point with like in in reading like stories of vampires at at that age it was like this feels more real than the reality it's like that's how that's how you paint every interaction and every conversation and when anyone would talk to me that wasn't or just in general anyone that would come and talk to me i'm like immediately framing it what do you want Hmm. what do you want from me did you have this all your like since since you were little yes yeah 
Oh, wow. Wow. I would, I would place it, call me crazy, but I would place it like actually in, in vitro because of a emotional neglect. And then that was my defense mechanism for not fully feeling that because that would have destroyed me to feel it fully. Instead, it was like, this is the world you're stepping into. So you have to get yours. You have to be defensive. You have to look out for yourself because people are trying to take things from you and it's not going to be a giving harmonious whole relationship with the world. When do you think, do you, have you met a lot of people that, um, lived through this shadow specifically the way you did yeah um yeah i would say most of my family and friends throughout most of my life there's occasionally people that would have have an orientation as part of the whole but they would they wouldn't stick around and just as we won't stick around people that are severely dislocated because it's really draining. Hmm. Do you think you, you mirrored your environment that you grew up with, or do you think it was your own? Well, it's tempting to just say I mirrored my environment, but I have to take some responsibility. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't have, you didn't know better when you were little. Right. So you're like, I'll yeah. just do what they're doing and, you know, hate the world because it sucks. Yes. And some level though, there's an awareness of choice. And that's the hardest thing is not no longer being a victim, you know, as we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. So, so when did you, when did, when was your solar plexus turned <laughs> on for you to pass and bridge between the two? Um, it was a process. I think there's been some moments. Uh, one key moment was um, I was in Alaska and feeling a calling to cross this river, which was bigger than I had imagined and wavier and deeper. <laughs> and I was like holding my stuff. Like I took my clothes off and my wall. I had all my stuff with me. And I was like, I'm just going to cross this river. Smart thing to do, right? When you're 16, you just do that stuff. And I was holding my stuff above my head and I was sick that week. I had all these reasons why, but I was just feeling like I'm not going to make it. And then I dropped my pack down the river. I had my wallet in it, my ID, everything. And as I watched it float by, I was like, that's my body in a few minutes. And then I started to think about my parents, my family, like all the people, like, you know, your flash, your life is flashing before your eyes. I'm imagining what they're going to say. Like he, his body washed up. I hope they know it wasn't suicide, but they probably don't know. They're probably not going to know. And I fought hard and I screamed a few times as much as I could without getting water in my mouth. And I kept swimming. And at some point I said, okay, this is it. And I rolled onto my back, just keeping my mouth and my nose above the water and just floated there and like lightly swimming is much easier for me and kind of looking at the, at the sky, like you can, <laughs> It sounds like I'm making it up, but the, you know, the clouds part, the sun comes through and just feeling like this. Yeah. Like this connection that I didn't, wasn't aware of before on a level that was deeply personal. Cause I was alone. And in the Alaskan wilderness, the closest thing to me was like fish and a bear. Right. <laughs> wow. So it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like I could just place it on someone else or how someone else was thinking or what they were trying to make me feel through, you know, cause we, we get defensive when people do that. And then, and then I felt something touch my back. I turned over and I was on the other shore and I just laid there exhausted 
and I couldn't speak for a week. And it was just like, I think the reason was like just processing this internal processing what happened. And I was changed for a time. I came back and I was like really harmonious. I was very open. My, you know, my, I've always been like closed around my heart and it was like more open. I was more giving. I was doing chores around the house, all these things. And everyone was commenting about how much I changed. And there was like a mirroring of fear in that, Mm. especially for my family. Like, like you can't just change that easy or that's, you don't know what it's like, you know, like the, the projection of victimization and the hardships and then not having strength behind it, it faded. And, but I would say that was like the profound first instance of the feeling of orientation. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I love the story. <laughs> it's like almost I can see, I can see you floating around and having that moment of bliss. Yeah. Of realization that this is not all, that there's more. And yeah. it comes, and it does say, it comes out of blue. Um, <clears throat> and when it, it is activated, it says there is a, per- a perceptual shift pre-wired into the DNA of every human being. And when it is activated, it occurs in spite of you as an aspect of your biological evolution. At a certain point, your new awareness simply begins to open up. It does so gradually at first, but over time, it coincides with a remarkable improvement in the quality of your life. As you see it, so it changes. Hmm. Maybe you were just at the young age where you couldn't stand for it so strongly and defend it. Rather, you were part of the uh, part of the environment. Yeah. Ever-changing environment around you. Yeah. And as, as I spoke on earlier, you when you're in the shadow so deeply, you come around to this feeling of maybe I'm hallucinating. And if you don't have people in your life that can reflect the truth to you, like the ultimate truth, then you will, that will be generated more and more. Like you'll, you'll have to fight. So like, it would be so hard to fight that environment. And I feel for your aunt, like I shed a tear when you're telling the story because I'm not sad that she lost the awareness. I'm just sad that she didn't have people around her that could like bring her more into it. Um, But also as I orient understanding the ebb and flow and it's, and it, and it's going to take its natural course. It's perfect. And she'll, she'll probably have another experience or, or maybe it'll be a full on shift where she won't go back. Yeah. But it's almost like we need, we need to see, we need to participate in the dualistic nature to then understand, like, as they said, as Richard said, one plus one is actually three. The relationship yeah. itself it's is part of that one. equation. Yeah. Yeah. And the two doesn't matter. It matters right. one and three, mm-hmm. which is you and the relationship. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, but it, 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 it took you to be alone, to face it, to see it. Do you think environment, a trusting and... um maybe warm, gentle environment where you can develop that would actually activate that in you? Just sat home with your mom. I'm not sure. Yeah. Just sat home with your mom that was cooking the dinner in front of the Christmas tree. Probably you wouldn't activate anything. Maybe it would. It happens out of blue. That's the best part. But it happens when you're the most expecting it. And when you... You're about to give up off yes. something. There has to be some level of what we're talking about is like the ego, right? So it's the ego death. And so well, something has to shift on such a profound level that you can't hold anything else. And for me in the waters, it was like there's no there's no one to save me. I you know, there's nothing, there's no animal, magical animal that could come up. And there was a this childhood experience growing up that there was going to always be a guardian angel to step in and just save me from something. So I could, so I didn't have to face it. 
And you could say paradoxically that that was a guardian angel stepping in at that moment. But there's also, a, it was a new awareness of alone on a, on a, on a level you didn't know before. It's not you and another, it's alone you as <laughs> hard to put into words. It's hard to put into words. But the, it's like the little self versus the, the bigger self, essentially what happens. It's like you're placed into a situation where you have to realize the bigger self because the pain of being the small self, it's too great or the, or you've lost it completely. Like you've just let go. I think a lot of people will find themselves in your story. A lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what I did not expect us to do. <laughs> I learn about ourselves as we go through every single jinky, but listen, and you you don't have the two, right? What's you don't that? Have, you don't have the number two. Oh, here. no. I think my my lowest number is like 20 something. So we have a long period of self-discovery before it can kind of place it. <laughs> But you can relate to the gifts or the shadow of the other numbers, even if you don't have them. Powerful. Yeah, it's, I mean, these are concepts of the human experience. So, of course, yeah. Hmm. So your environment made you change the way you felt about this hallucin. <laughs> moment in your life when you were floating on the river and the uh, clouds part and sun came and angels saved you or gave you the guidance how when was the time when you ended up passing through the bridge from that shadow to the gift mm -hmm. when, when was the time in your life when you did that and stayed yes oh it's probably more recent than what i would like to think um To me, moving to Hawaii seems to be the most accurate placement of that shift because, and as we talk about environment, it's like I no longer had a mirroring environment that was dislocated. Like the people here, for the most part, I mean, there's there's pain and suffering everywhere, but for the most part, the people here are oriented and the culture of Hawaii itself and Hawaiians is one of unity. And the even the first word I learned, aloha, is completely like unified in the greater whole. It's it's, so, it's such a profound meaning in it. So I would say, yeah, moving here. It just happened recently, last year. Yeah, one one year ago. And even in moving, it was like you imagine a tuning fork at like, you know, 300 hertz, and then you place it in a, in a box that has a speaker that's vibrating at like 900 hertz. It's going to take time for that tuning fork to stop its own vibration and then pick up the vibration of the, of the environment, right? So... At the first month and a half were actually really, really, really disorienting. And it was like very disruptive. And I, like my relationships were kind of blowing up. <laughs> and I had to find my way back to the whole and be oriented. And, and it was kind of like repairing my own damage I had done to others and to my own relationships and to myself hmm. and it was it was like flipping a house you know you have to take up take up the old floor before you can put down a new one and that was your 
walking over the bridge to when you realize that everything is the unity, that everything is happening for the reason that once you become that aware of that same, there's one saying that it's circling around nowadays. It's like things are happening for you, not to you. Yeah. And everybody's saying this and it's so popular, especially here in LA. The moment you realize that really that is true, regardless of you hearing it, it is that the 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 sun is shining for you as well that the clouds are separated for you that the nudge or the urge that you have to make that change is happening for you is that you're becoming aware of it and once you start trusting that the unity of the universe universal unity is really happening for all of us and there to synchronize us to to get to the level of whatever level that it is, but it's not the shadow. That yeah. uh, we feel this for sure that we once we get rid of the shadow and we learn how to process it and pass through the second level on um, the second level of whatever existence is that you start feeling this. And it almost, I almost feel like it comes with the age, honestly. And yeah. we'll talk about the thirty six, thirty seven, and the reason why because I heard your message asking yeah. me why, why, why is that portal happening? <laughs> It doesn't need to be really, but everybody is on their own timeline. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, by that time, you start really learning about yourself as a very different, maybe one plus one is not two, one plus one is me in relationship with something, either nature or community or yeah. uni- universe or sun or, the, or my own God that I have. It's like me and this relationship that makes me feel accepted for who I am and that makes me trust the universe that has my back that makes me believe that this is happening for me that moment of realization really the moment you become aware of it that's when you your eyes start opening up you put them all over your place you have them on your back on your shoulders and you start start seeing the gifts of the second key which are synchronicities Mm-hmm. which we love talking about and let's mm-hmm. just dive in because I'm so excited to talk about it. That is mm-hmm. where I think everybody experiences synchronicities. Everybody gets, mm-hmm. everybody gets to, Ooh, but it's the shadow that stops you from believing and trusting that there are the reasons why the synchronicities happen and why birds fly in a perfect, I don't know perfect yeah. like a line rather yeah. than the different letter for example or they show up sometimes as the m so let, let's let's dive into it unless you have something else to say about the shadow no let's let's do it let's go oh yeah this one was hard i admit uh really hard for me maybe because i don't really connect with it and i um the loneliness was i didn't gr- i grew up alone but i never felt lonely and I can maybe connect this to many past lives that I feel I had and that I was told that I had that eventually you go through so many of these experiences that you realize you're really not alone, even if you're lonely. I mean, you're really not lonely, even if you're alone. There's mm-hmm. a difference between the two. And um, I'm very comfortable with the aloneness within Mm-hmm. Why? I don't know. So the shadow for being separated is really strange concept for me. Oh, okay. Very strange. Right. And um, I feel like I'm, I was always, almost always living in that awareness. It was just the moment when I would start paying attention. And I remember exact moment when I started paying attention to the synchronicities, which is the gift of it. But I never felt the shadow. Or maybe... I don't understand that I did feel the shadow. Maybe I suppressed it or, or, um, but I, I cannot recollect any story or any feeling or any moment in my life when I actually felt so lonely and separated for, from everything around. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's, but, that's, oh. that's a great thing. Let's, <laughs> let's celebrate that. Well, we'll see. Maybe we don't really connect with all the shadows really. Um, yeah 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 which is also interesting i didn't know that that can happen to through jinkies but yeah so uh, with orientation which is the second gift um of 
you know, the, um, it's called, uh, there's a mineral magnetism. And I like that they also connect this to logically to connect this to the chemical process of um, uh, pineal gland right. of having uh, the little mineral, uh, which which is called, what is it called? Magnetite. Magnetite. Oh my yeah. God. That actually makes you so magnetic. People want a piece of you. They want to uh, just bite it. They want to <laughs> try it. They want to smell it. They want to take it. They want to hug it. They want to touch it. Yeah. That's how magnetic you become. And you can feel when people, you can feel this in people around when you meet them. I meet a lot of people that are very magnetic and that I just want to be in their presence. It's almost like, I just want to like be in your aura so that I can get a little bit of this feeling that you're just radiating out. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. What do you think about magnetite? Magnetite. Um yeah, it's interesting. It's like the beacon or the antenna for the universe in a way, like how how communication back and forth happens to orient ourselves. So when we, I, I couldn't help but talk about fluoride and how fluoride was put in water. Actually, the city I lived in was the first city in the U.S. to introduce fluoride into the water system. Hmm. And, what's that tell me more i don't know yeah so fluoride is has been shown to block pineal gland activity or have calcification where you have mineral deposits of fluoride so the activity is like way way less hmm. and then the people who meditate or do breath work or don't use fluoride in their water or with toothpaste or with supplementation they have higher activity levels in their pineal gland wow yeah wow their their beacon or their antenna is is more attuned or it's more active i should say because really it's just activity levels it's there's always messages being sent Hmm. it's yeah you're like a receptor yeah and it's interesting because it's in the middle of your brain Right. And the, it used to be what it was considered back before 20,000 years ago, whenever, back, back in the day, that that was our third eye. Yeah. That was our third eye, the receiver mm-hmm. of all the universal information that we out there from somewhere coming in. Mm-hmm. Do you, um, can you, um, other than us meeting, which I thought we were blasting magazine when we met, <laughs> uh, you, you, Carly, and I, we were like, just, I just feel this like vibrational. I think people really enjoyed us around, even though maybe they didn't even know that that's right. coming from us. Mm-hmm. When we just like combined together all our energies, that was a very big synchronicity. The moment I passed from shadow, I mean, from uh, no. Let me rephrase this. The moment I became aware of my sacrum or um, uh, sacral, uh, sacral area and intuition was led. The moment I crossed that bridge to the gift, I started realizing a lot of synchronicities. One after another, after another, after another. And it never stopped ever since. Everything in life is synchronicity. And yeah. everything in life that synchronous, the way it plays out, it's like when it's ready to fall apart it will fall apart within three weeks and you won't even have a say when it crosses like this is how you moved to hawaii if i recall correctly you just decided at this event and you were like we're packing like i'm just gonna well yeah to to really kind of clarify that we had the thought that we would like to and then a few months down the road carly was like i'm gonna look up tickets we were just driving somewhere and she's like whoa they're way cheaper right now they're like 450 dollars, and normally they're seven or eight hundred and i said okay we'll keep and i was like wait a second stop i said book them we can always cancel she's like book them okay i'll book them and after sitting with it you know sleeping on it we were like we this this is too unique that when she looked it up, they were $300 cheaper. 
this is synchronicity. So let's follow it, even if it's difficult. Yes, because you trusted it. Yeah. And, and what did you trust? Some higher level order that I wasn't aware of. The infinite trust mm -hmm. that something has your back. Mm -hmm. And here you are changing your fundamentally your life from nothing, from everything to nothing to build something. Yeah. With your kids. Yeah. Your entire family. It's easy if I, as me, I'm alone. So it's easy for me just to pack my stuff and, and, and go and move to another country. But for you, it's like fundamentally different. You have to have everyone, everything and everything aligned for everyone's good. Yeah. Two things. Number one, pack your bags and come on over here. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> you, um, you pointed to like, you said three weeks. And I think I remember you saying this in a personal story. Could you touch on, in whatever level you're comfortable with, could you touch on synchronicity that isn't exactly um, positive? Like you mentioned, like this dismantling or, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I think you yeah, know, you're catching me. So go ahead. Yes. I'll give you the other example. My father passed away and it was a moment when, um, well, actually, I'll, I'll scratch that one off. Uh, I'll do the other one, which happened really earlier, which got me to the point where I am. And it was almost like a portal that I felt was open for me and the door that I just got to enter. Mm. I would fly home um, with so much expectations every year. I would go home and expect all this uh, love, acceptance, uh, admiration, and everything, whatever that I was missing, because I was living in some sort of shadow here. I'll yet to discover which one was it. But I expected so much from others mm. for me to feel good about whatever that I was doing in life, changing, mm. learning different culture, learning language, earning the living, earning points for myself to consider successful, self to consider my life being successful or whatever, um, setting up certain standards and that I couldn't even understand why I set such a high standards for myself with uh, jumping from zero to everything. Of course, I'm going to be disappointed, but I seek the validation from others a lot. And every time I would go, I would come back crying, uh, saying I will never, ever go back again. Ever, 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 ever. Because all they see is just financial, material stuff, physical stuff. And I was much younger. I was, that was maybe six, seven, eight years, years ago. So I'm on one of those work trips. I meet this woman. This woman and I talk all day long. She tells me about Gaia app. I don't know if you have it. Yeah. Gives me, we connect. I don't even remember her name. Um, I don't, I, I don't even remember. I only remember her eyes and her hair. But we disregarded work that day. We just talked from nine to 12 hours. We just talked and connected. Like it was one of those soul contracts that we just meet. She gives me, and she's like, have you heard of this app called Gaia? I was like, no. She was like, give me your phone. Let me just log into it. So that way you don't have to pay. I'm already using someone else's account here. You can just use it. And I disregarded it completely. And I was like, nah, whatever. So I'm coming home and coming back from uh, Europe and I'm flying out and I'm crying. I am deeply disappointed. Deeply disappointed. The middle of it was a red eye flight. And uh, suddenly I just discover and suddenly out of blue, the app just comes to my mind. And I'm like, this girl just gave me this app. Let me just see what it is. The moment I opened the app, it was like the moment I opened the door for everything. Oh, my God. It was like all this information. And I just kept diving in, Eric. One book led me to another book, to this house, to that house, to this information. I was, my mind was blown away. Yeah. And I just entered into the space of like, Whoa, 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 whoa. Not only theories, but not only ether uh, ethereal thinking, the life after life. I literally started diving into everything that has nothing to do with this existence, with this realm, everything. And my mind just exploded. That moment of me, oh, this girl gave me this app. Let me just enter into this space. Changed me forever. Ever since, I, I'm not stopping. So I'm never coming back to that life that I lived before that moment. Now I go home every year still having no expectations. 
The only difference that changed is that now I'm entering into the space where I get to see and control, uh, not control, more like I get to feel my way through the life and pay attention to synchronicities. Everything ever since synchronized uh, happened in my life drastically in a synchronized manner. Mm-hmm. Everything ever since, uh, since, and I'll connect you one more thing too. When I dream, and there's a repetitive dream that I have, which is a tsunami. And usually tsunami, I can't find the, the meaning of tsunami dream anywhere, anywhere. And uh, how I understand it or feel, it's related to the emotions because it's a water and usually the tsunami comes in and it's about to eat me alive. And usually I save someone. Back in the day, I saved everybody, like my nephews, Kim Kardashian even. Like she was there. <laughs> I was like, give me your hand. <laughs> And tsunami, the, t- the wave would come over. It would be ginormous, bigger than the building. And somehow I just take this deep breath. I get deep into the emotions and I'm like, just listen, follow me and take a deep breath. Let it suck us all in. We will survive. We always survive. Yeah. Later on in life, the tsunami dream repeated, but I would watch it from far. Oh. And usually when tsunami happens, something changes. Some- there is a huge change. Um change of uh, belief systems, change of, uh, and it happens in the synchronized manner. Yeah. And just last week, I actually had the tsunami, which I didn't for a while. So now I'm waiting to see what are the synchronicity. Oh, I'm going in a gym and I'm lifting and I just look up and then I see the birds or I'm lifting and then I see the clouds and I see all these different forms or I hear the song and the moment I enter into the song to listen to the lyrics, there's a word out there that resonates. So everything becomes synchronicity and now i'm playing the game because i can't wait to see what it is it's almost like mystique oh. <laughs> but it can go a different way i am trusting that no matter how bad and disruptive destructive it is it is for good yeah i am trusting it so much that i almost want it to happen so often Easy said than done. Yes, easy said than done. Now I'm sitting here and really like trust <laughs> a lot of things months later for yeah. all this destruction, but it really rebuilds you on a very different level. Trust if I'm trusting the synch- and I'm paying attention to the synchronicities, it's like I know something is cooking. It's almost like you know, I'm like yeah, tingly, tingly on my body. Yeah. So a week ago you had tsunami and you you not you're not sure yet what's coming. Oh, I'm just expecting it. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be physically moving to another location or I don't know. Yeah. Changing yeah. the relationships, changing the job, but it's coming. And yeah. I trust it. So a lot of people will, will connect this to as you think that so you live, uh, your thoughts are your life, you're manifesting. But it, this is different. It's almost like deep knowing that something I'm connected to some different source of it. That's the trust that I'm talking about. I'm not really overthinking it or analyzing it. I just know something is going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I'll let you know what it is. Yeah, right. Yeah, I've had a few tsunami dreams since moving to Hawaii. And I think I wasn't paying close enough attention to pinpoint uh, cause and effect relationship. But yeah, I I can feel into it's like a it's like as Pisces. Uh, you know, we're, we're feeling into like this energy that's moving. And usually with tsunamis, like the water pulls away first. So maybe that's what we're feeling. So, so, okay. Tell me about the dream though. Is it, is it the water coming over you and you're getting sucked into, or do you see it from um, far? Are you oh, in it been, or you're out? It's been a while for me. The last one I had, it was like, it was just massive and we were in it. It was like taller than the sky skyscrapers in LA, right? So it's like just huge. I think it was somewhere in California too, which is funny. Um, oh, I've never been there, but. <laughs> in California? Yeah. We got to change that. Yeah. By the time we finish this, I was thinking maybe we should, you should come. We should kind of you know, have a professional setup and then maybe kind of, I don't know, record the good like 10 or 12 a batch yeah that's that would be amazing yeah okay anyhow love this to talk about the synchronicities is there anything you want to point out specifically uh from the gift um let me see here mm-hmm. this excites me though the gift of it yeah absolutely it's this one is like the harmony 
what I wrote down is like harmony is contagious. Like just, it's like you can help others to see it. And so one of the quotes here I'll read, I'm not sure if this is in the city or the gift, but I think it's applicable. People who are deeply surrendered and attuned to life's processes can be so empowering. They can intuitively sense how surrendered or resistant others are to the great truth of their universality. Over time, such people bring others into their own personal harmony through the magnetic power of their aura. I wrote that down because it's like, they're not saying that these people are on some mission to change the world. Like they're just, it's just their aura. It's just like in their being. And they have a sense of where you are, but they remain in, in their being. And in stories of enlightenment and meditation practice, I've heard the the person who is in a cave meditating for 30 years in an enlightened state is doing as much work as the person who's on this big mission to help a million people. And it's because their their aura and their magnetite connection is is what Richard Rudd said. I think I am getting into the cities, but um changing the trajectory of the planet Earth itself. Mm -hmm. And so it's like the ultimate surrender, right? Of the feminine principle, the ultimate surrender. Like there's nothing for me to do but be in resonance. And there's no way to comprehend that as a city. But in orientation, harmony is contagious. And when you feel yourself in harmony, you can feel when others step into that. And like you said, like with your, um, some people are so magnetic. You are very magnetic. That's the reason I sat next to you on the plane. Carly is extremely magnetic. She's like, I can't get people off of me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she is. She yeah. so is. Um, so it's, it's people like you that are enabling great change for others and just your presence and just your being. And it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be a celebrity to do it either. You can just be walking down the street or yeah. sitting in your room. Yeah. Yeah. And you're making the difference. <clears throat> it's hard not to jump into why there are not many more of people being so magnetic, but maybe they are. And almost like, you you know, you can give away your energy, but you also know you need to charge it somewhere. And often people like this charge it in loneliness and seclusion. It's like, no, 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 no. I need my time. And then you come back in nine out of 10 days. You're actually alone charging in order to give this one hour or two or yeah. that one Sunday to it. But it's interesting because you're, you're right. It comes and it changes your aura. So somebody read my aura a couple couple months ago and she's like, you have a lot of this like, above earth color and to that it's like it's a it's, it's not white it's not purple and it's more like you're elevating you're almost like uh detached from the earth right you don't mm. a lot of people sit on the earth but that yeah. there tells me your old soul she goes that you lived so many of these lives that maybe you didn't even need to come here anymore because you learned a bunch of the lessons but that experience of life that is collective and yours that comes with you and that knowing Maybe is the reason why I can't connect with a lot of sh with this shadow specifically of being alone because maybe that's what people need to tune into it. You don't have to feel all the shadows. You can be born into the gifts almost of it. Maybe Carly, you know. So you have yeah. three kids. One of them can just be like ah, super moody. The second can be super light. The third can be super get away i don't want any affirmation or any attention right so they're all different why are they different they come from the same genetics the same parents they are different because they carry different self from independent unique different self from other past lives my theory we will never prove this right, right or wrong right. but you come with certain knowledge or certain knowing or certain experiences which really can be magnetic or not yeah Ever since I was little, I, I, I was attracted to people that are magnetic, which Pisces, no joke. I would literally go and sit right next to this old lady and just play next to her. And I was like, oh, excuse me, can I just play a sand 
right next to you. And my mom would just look at me. She's like, don't bother the lady. I was little. I, what did I know when I was little? I just loved the feeling of the energy. And she was like, sure. And we would just sit there. Yeah. Right. It's like, it feels great. Cause I am, she's magnetic and I love the feeling to be around her. So I, I would feel comfortable with people that are yeah. at the same level of magnetism. It feels like. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, you probably don't get many opportunities, but if you were to walk into a room with a bunch of parents and a lot of kids, it's much easier to come down to the level of kids and get them to feel that harmony is contagious. And they are like, they're like, all of a sudden they're next to you. They're playing with you. They're smiling at you. Whereas if you tried the same thing with adults, they have their conditionings and their beliefs and their blockages and it's more difficult. But the, the people that are in alignment, you can feel whether you give them a hug or you just spend some time with them or you look them deep in their eye. Like you can feel when they're, and it's interesting. It's not like they're attaining something or experiencing something. It's just that they're completely wide open, right? It's like all the way down, all the way up. Uh, yeah. Open in one way. I love it. I just want to know in what way you mean. Um whether you you could say like meridians or chakras or just energy in the body and that you know people that uh don't have much experience in talking in this way you know it could be like knots in your muscles or an ache in your knee or like a pit in your stomach like you just have like a worry or like all that all of that can be actually let go of and cleared and when you let go of it you're just an open channel or that communication and that's harmonious mm -hmm. and that's what that's what can shift other people when you step into that open channel mm -hmm. it's like impossible hey. impossible to ignore and you'll trigger people too if they're not ready you were what you can trigger people if you're not if they're not ready for it oh Oh, you trigger them for to come closer or to move away from? Oh, I guess both uh, sides. Um, the the triggering, like, yeah, like, I'm not ready. To be, I'm not ready to feel that. I'm not ready to experience that. Like, let me suffer more. I want to suffer more. <laughs> oh yeah. Last week, here's the example. I had a woman at work who said, "I was like, well, you, she's a little a elderly woman, uh, you know, in her late fifties, I believe, and she was like, I'm not ready." to enter and think this way no 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 i love feeling the way i feel knowing what i know that that you know they've been conditioned i feel very comfortable for the matter yes. of fact i had a younger woman who i worked with back in the past say the same thing i know i have something much more within me but i'm not ready for it and she is still not ready to tap into it it's all yeah. the brain and conditioning yeah if i could just touch on that it's just to place it for if you're listening and you feel that it's just your fear of the unknown. And it's what you're projecting into the unknown. There's actually nothing there. It's just whatever you've projected. So if you can trace your projections about what might happen and then pull it back into the reality that you're here now and just dissolve that, then you can actually step into it because what's coming for you is better, not worse always better and what's come the first thing that comes and maybe it's different for you is you feel lighter you were like yeah does that like sense of lightness that comes in your head not that heavy because you pass through the fear of unknown and what if you can just write it for what's happening yeah instantly that second feels much lighter and you're like Woo! I guess, I guess, yes. You feel excited. Yeah. Oh, my case. Is that how you feel too? You feel lighter when you enter something that you're kind of like, hmm. Yeah, yeah. I would describe it as a as a weight being lifted. And for me, it's like usually my neck and shoulders. Oh, really? Good. Oh, you, you can actually feel it on your body. Yeah, and, you know, different people have different intuition about what is occurring and so we 
understand it differently, but I've interacted with many healers, like hands-on healers um, or energy healers, and they can they can look at you and they can place, they can see, look at you like you're just in the room and they're not even like talking to you. They're just having a conversation. They're like, oh yeah, you you have some grief there in your stomach and you're holding a lot for your family and your shoulders. And I'm like, wow. you know, luckily I'm open. I'm like, thank you for making me more aware but for a lot of people it's triggering it's like they don't want to be seen in that in that way oh yeah yeah Mm -hmm. see uh they don't want to be seen vulnerable yeah child okay um there's one thing that i highlighted here that i just want to point out and this is related to the the gift is that as the frequency through the second gift rises you live more harmonically And the electromagnetic power of your aura increases. The more you let go of the feminine yielding quality of this gift, the more universal power floods through you. Mm. Your timing becomes more and more fine-tuned. Ah, How can you say no for this? (laughs) Why would you ever say no for this? It is so good. Well, we have perspective um yeah it is through this i was just gonna say i feel the same way and when you work with people that like you said with that younger woman who's like i'm not ready for it what like what is your reaction in your body when she says it acceptance acceptance you don't have like a first mine's like gasping like like (laughs) like are you sure are you sure? Uh, yeah, it's like tight. It's like, do I want to push through that or do I? But I know I can't. It's right. not her time. That's right. how I see it. Oh, and I almost like I'm accepting that you are right now not ready. But when you get ready, I wish I can be there just to witness. Participate. Yeah. The the juiciness and like the, like, you know, like the, 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 the nectar of it. Yeah. Like the sweetness of it. It says, it is through the second gift that you can see the hidden agenda of life. Mm. I'm gonna say, do you ever wonder what's a hidden agenda? If you don't, then you're not ready for it. It, it takes your time. But if you wonder, if you question, oh, so go there. Yeah. Yeah, when it, the phrasing hidden agenda makes me think of conspiracy theories and i'll just say this if you're conspiratorial in any way but you aren't yet sure of what we're talking about just place the conspiracy one level higher and keep doing that exercise and eventually you'll come to this place of orientation of harmony in the universe Mm, good one in the previous book that i read it splits the emotions in two very different um reactions of the body mm. so you you pointed out hidden agenda can go that way yeah. um that emotion almost feels forced and repetitive in life it's very hard and it's cold rather than the gentle emotion of trusting mm. life in universe mm-hmm. right it's like there's you can split the emotions within the two when you talk about the hidden agenda of life it's almost like it's mysterious and fairy tale-ish and it's very yeah. gentle it's kind of like her it's 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 uh hugging you more and telling you come over here it's more like feminine. Very, yeah rather than very set in stone yeah beautiful of it hmm. yeah to touch on that the masculine and feminine real quick richard rudd this is maybe gonna be framed like a question for you but richard rudd talks about we can approach things scientifically and trying to understand them or we can be feminine and, and random and accepting and they both will eventually lead to the same point the enlightenment and the middle way is like contemplative where you kind of do both right in some level is that a question so the question (laughs) in in the in this gift the masculine principle is really an externalization of the feminine rather than duality My question is very general. Can you help me understand that? I wrote it down. Can you can you read it again? Yes. The masculine principle is really an externalization of the feminine 
rather than a duality. <laughs> uh, I think of math, I think of ones and zeros, the zero being feminine. And the illusion that one is its own number, but it comes out of something, it comes out of the nothing. It comes it comes out of the concept of zero. Or maybe I think Robert Edward Grant has used the imaginary numbers as more of a relatable trait of femininity where it's like it exists, but it doesn't exist at the same time. Will it's, this it's, answer? Will this answer? Yeah, yeah. The masculine pole is very simple and straightforward, but the feminine is beyond any sense of reason and understanding. Mm hmm where the masculine principle is really an externalization of the feminine rather than the duality. With mm -hmm. that, the duality doesn't exist. I highlighted the same exact thing. The masculine pole is very simple and straightforward, but the feminine is beyond any sense of reason and understanding. It's almost like these two, how I get it, these two are so opposite that it's pointless to even understand them as dual. Right. They exist. One and the same. <laughs> this is what Jinkies do. Okay, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, right. You're listening. So this is what you're supposed to do. Sit and think and contemplate again and again and again and again. It spins you round and round. Until it really doesn't make sense at all. Yeah. Duality is destroyed by a strange kind of divine logic. So okay. on, a yeah, on, a on a divine level, the masculine and feminine do not exist as we understand them. They do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They intertwine as energy, my theory. They, my feeling, I, I'm not logically understanding this at all. It's almost like they intertwine. I cannot live without the masculine. And so, and feminine too. With that, I'm one. I don't have the two. I have one only. And as a one, as such one, I come in the relationship of the third area, which is the relationship with others that we touched base in the in the in the beginning of it. So one plus one does not equal two in this divine logic, but always makes three. The only numbers that really exist at the Siddic level are one and three which is me having both masculine and feminine intertwined together doing their own thing and relationship with whatever that I encounter in life. Mm. That mm -hmm. both have play in. Yes, yes. Because if I look at you, to put it on the very surface base level, if I look at you, Eric, I know you're a very masculine man. But I also see the feminine side of you. That doesn't yeah. split you in two Eric's. That just gives me one Eric. I accept yeah. both sides. But if I live under the condition that you are supposed to only be masculine, as we live in the society that does, does that to us, you should not express any traits of the femininity within you, then I am making you a dual. There's two Eric's. How dare you to be the feminine one? But instead, mm -hmm. I'm accepting everything as is, as a perfect, and the sense of, du the sense of duality comes in you being just you. Same the opposite side too. I look very masculine on the physical level, but yet I'm, I'm having more trace, traces of femininity than the masculinity. The outside book cover is very different from the insides of the pages. Yeah. So why would you look at me as one or the other rather than one unity of both? Which is yes, and it's an un, it's an unlearning. It's unlearning mm -hmm. of the conditional programming. Yeah. And also accepting at this level that we are all just that. Mm -hmm. That there's no wrong religion. There's no wrong color. There's no wrong gender. There's no wrong doing. There's no wrong doing, no? Yes. And this is a tough, this is probably the most difficult topic for people. Yeah. Because it's right, right and wrong. 
Yeah. Yes. Oh, perfect. It's all one. Yeah. So to navigate our way through this, enlightenment is not an experience for you. It actually negates you. <laughs> and I have a I have a friend, a very dear friend. Um and she is enlightened. And every time I talk with her, she makes me feel negated. And for a long time, well, not at first, she was gentle, but now she knows I can handle it. And she'll give me that experience. And for a while, I would, Carly would come to me. She'd be like, what's going on? You seem kind of frazzled. And I'm like, well, I just talked to my friend, Sarah. And yeah, I don't know what to do anymore. Because <laughs> she'll take whatever concept that I'm spinning and she'll just twirl it. She'll just like throw it away. She'll just send it away. And I'm like, well, that's not what I was looking for. I was looking for some more definition or more some more conceptual. At most, she'll give me practices to do. You know, Who are you like talking, that. Sarah or Carly? Sorry, uh, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Sarah, my friend. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's very it's very Zen, and Zen is like the negation of you and and nonsensical because it's getting you to let go of all of the concepts. So as I touched on briefly, and as we covered Jinky number one, as we're getting into this, this is quite selfish, but it's also at this higher level. In some sense, not necessary for either of us or for anyone listening. None of it's needed. But on some level, it's perfect. It has to be a paradox. As every CD is a paradox. Yeah. So you're saying at some level it is not needed, but it's perfect. Are you talking about reaching enlightenment? Because it's not there. It's not an experience. It's not like something to reach. Yes. Yeah. It's something to live. To live, to be, to embody. Oh, what I is that? I highlighted that too. What? You see that thumbs up bubble that came up on the screen? Did you do this? No. <laughs> this is weird because this thing happened. Synchronicity? <laughs> Did you see it? That would be so fun to play. No, back I, I, look, I mean, we'll see it on you recording. You were looking down and it just came up. It was like from your head too. I was like, whoa, that's cool. <laughs> that is wild. Oh, gosh. How does he know? right okay but we we'll won't go into yeah, the yeah. theory this is exactly what i highlighted as well enlightenment oneness cannot be comprehended only lived and enlightenment is not the experience uh, <clears throat> if you see oneness as an experience to be attained or that may one day happen to you then you're caught within the straight line between two points you're coming from here to here. I'm doing all this work so that I can move from this point of my life to this point of my life. It's You're caught in between. So yeah. it's not really something that we can reach ever. I yeah. love this. The third thing is transcendence. It does not occur to you. Rather, it negates you. That's what you were saying. Ironically, transcendence does not take you away from life, as its name might suggest it places you right in the heart of life where you have always been. It unifies all opposites, ends all riddles, leaves all mysteries just as they are and bring, brings a sense of trust that cannot be described. Mm. I can't even imagine living in this state yet. Maybe it's not the state that we live in constantly. Maybe it's just the tapping that we enter into on occasion, just so that we can remember or recall the memory of oh, being in awe and not thinking it is so hard. Yeah, it's habitual. 
it's it's just simply habit so even as we embody the truth and that enlightened state will come out in an instant and try to make sense or or place it in a box or put concepts around it or just even just describing it hey, i had this experience it's like no you didn't <laughs> who is you who are you oh. who is the one that is seeking and speaking and feeling wow so would you rather say we In a sense, like, in a sense, you're looking for a way to still talk about it. Like, how can we use the right words so that we can still talk about it? <laughs> I think I think of um. there's a story of a monk in a kingdom. I, I'm not getting the exact details, but I think it will kind of help show. And that's this monk was on a bridge between the king's castle or wherever he was and the town. And he was naked on the bridge, lying down, doing nothing. And so many people complained to the king that the king came one day and he said, he said, what are you doing here on, on the bridge? And he said, the monk said, I am a monk of nothing. And it just it's not what he expected at all so he took the monk he gave him clothes he put him up in his court and gave him a place to live for the rest of his life because he taught him something then and there and it was totally embodied by the monk he wasn't he wasn't on a mission to change anything or to do anything or mm -hmm. to get people to see his way or to you know and this is this is why as we unfold this <laughs> for people listening they're like what the hell are they talking about what's the point of any of this then why are we even here but can we can we feel it like i think what you're pointing to can we feel it deeper and deeper and deeper and in more ways and trust it more and trust it more the more we don't know the more we should trust it's it's a it's a series of unfoldings, a series of surrenders, right? Like one more, one more layer. I just want to say thank you, Richard Rudd. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And thank you, Malika. Well, thanks, Eric. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is um, it is so powerful and so deep that you almost know life won't change from here much, but you know something changed right here. Like you, your depth of your heart of like the space that opens up with understanding and trying to get deep dive into the jinkies. It's more like the, the logic slowly, you're kind of slowly moving away from anything logical and you're entering this like depth of self mm. that is connected to oneness that this is the second key. And as we dive into all 64, the second key also talks about the oneness and I have this in my mind since we started this call. We came from oneness. Imagine this. We came from universal truth down to this duality and separateness in this realm where we are really tossed to learn what being separated means. To learn our relative truth, but learn how to be separated from universal truth. Hmm. And unless we learn the relative truth, we will not be able to comprehend the universal truth of it all. Yeah. So yeah. it keeps rolling in my in my mind is that 
wow, this entire human existence and human experience of 100 years, how long we have this. It's like really teaching us that separateness, but we're really trying to, we are really having this yearning and longing for yes. oneness mm-hmm. because we deep down know it exists because we came from it. Mm-hmm. That our relative truth and relative separateness here, that it's very subjective, very individualistic and very meme is really teaching us big deal too. So it's like you and I are trying to go back up there, <laughs> but yet we're realizing, wait a minute, we're walking this life and we're walking through the shadows which reflects through this, 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 this. So we're able to comprehend them and understand how to work through it in order to get right that back up. Maybe let me pivot. Let me caveat. Maybe that's not the point, but I guess we'll see when we end up 64 keys. <laughs> Maybe we're supposed to be separated. Maybe you and I are supposed to not at all even agree on anything, <laughs> but. Keep going. Know. Keep going. You go until it stops. It stopped. And it stopped on subjective and objective way of thinking. It stopped on feminine and masculine. It stopped just at that duality. It Mm. stopped on, should I be different? Should I be separated? Should I feel lonely, alone and separate from everyone? Or what is the the right state of being that I I should be working towards? You're shitting all over. (laughs) Which, you know, it's the cue. Yeah. Yeah. Breath is a tool to connect to spirit and to this feminine principle. So if you're not having breathing practices, it's like one of the best things that I've ever included in my days. I highly recommend it for anyone listening. Some some breath practice. Yeah, breath, I mean- breath and movement is really great. Yeah, if you have a links, maybe we'll post it down on this YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, thank you. Uh, same time next time. Yeah, sounds good. Lots of love. I love you. Thank you so much. I love you too. All right. Talk soon. <laughs>